life. And I think as always, you and I have no shortage of things to talk about. And we're gonna pick this conversation right back up where we left off. That being said, we are live. And for everyone who's tuning in, what's up? I'm coming to you from New York, New York. Jay Wong in the house, my good friend and someone I have been GSDing and hustle talking with forever. He's coming to you live from Italy. Yeah. A lot of you guys in this group might know him. I think I've been um, talking about him, bringing him into different things. He's a, a wicked friend of mine. So his thing is he teaches entrepreneurs how to launch podcasts and not just how to launch them, but he's like the most kick-ass person at this whole thing. So if you are someone who has thinking about launching a podcast or wondering or anything about a podcast, he's your guy. We're going to talk about what he does. Um, but just from a point of how he launched his business and all of the struggles and all of the conversations we've had along the last few years we just want to have a combo about it and let you guys in so what's up jay welcome 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 thanks so much for doing this by the way yeah no hey i appreciate it and i appreciate the any time any they're like do you want to hang out with stuff on this i'm like tell me when it's when? almost 10 o'clock here. Let's do. Let's go. We're going to geek out on business. Let's make this happen. Let's do it. Why <laughs> don't you tell us, like, we were, Jay's done so many crazy things and your business is evolving at a million miles an hour. So yeah. why don't you tell us, like, what is it that you're doing? What is it that you're up to? Like, what are your products, your offers? What do you got going on right now? Okay. So it's funny because I, I knew we were going to have this conversation. I made you that little voice note like earlier today. And it's, it's, it's nuts because when I first met Steph, I actually had zero products. She's funny. She's like, oh, what are your products and services now? I'm like, I had zero. When we, I, don't even know if you, I don't even know if you knew. Sir? How long ago was that? That So we, we met, like we started working together. Um, was it beginning of 2016? I'm, I'm the worst with time. So, or like middle, like, I'll just sit so here either, yeah. So, yeah, you're like, yeah, around that time frame. Um, because it, okay, it had to be like April, it had to be spring of 2016 latest okay. because I was literally getting on a flight like the week after to, to go right, to get on stage to, to get the, and it was like my first like speaking engagement at like a podcasting thing. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I don't, I don't know, like how to do it. Like, like, sh what, what should I share? Like, I didn't even know how to, how to go about it. Um, and, uh, from there, like literally like no products crushed it on the front end, like winning awards. So when you and I know that front end, and this is a really, we're going to have, this is like the main part of the conversation I want to have today. So when you say front end, we want to make sure everyone knows what the heck okay. it is. Yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. So, when, so we're, we're guys, we're making this all make sense for you because there's a mega takeaway here. And I know that Jay and I can get really jacked up <laughs> when we're talking. So I don't want you to miss this because as much as we're jamming out and have, and going to geek out over a combo, I want you to get this right. So we're going to have a conversation about the front end and the back end, which is really the biggest takeaway that Jay could have had and a lot of the reasons as to why he's been able to make his business make sense now. So when you say the front end, what do you mean? Okay. So, and we will, we will answer the question of what my current products and services are. I swear we will get there, we will get but, there. You, but you have to understand this first, because I, I know, I know, and I feel like I know I have a pretty good, like I, I know people in this group and I also yeah. have a pretty good pulse of people that are just joining this group yeah. because I, did what most I feel like most people that get into online marketing or trying to build a brand on business or on build an online brand. I did what most what everyone did, which is you focus on vanity metrics, like the likes, the engagement. Like I launched the podcast in 2015, and back then landscape was a little different. I was the number one self help podcast in Canada. Yeah. Okay? And I, I don't even know if that's how we met, but like, because I was interviewing like millionaires, New York bestsellers, like, like, people. I remember when I saw that you had Bob Proctor, I was like, okay. Yeah. Like, like it was, okay. it was, it was insane. Right. It was insane. I was winning awards for my podcasts. Um, this was before is the that what, Is that what they're called? Podcasts? They're, well, pod, yeah, podcast awards pod, or pod, 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 what? Multiple podcasts is called podcasts. Podcasts, yeah, podcasts, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you know, I didn't understand what I'm sure tons of people don't understand. A lot of times when they get that like exter external validation, right? They're like, my Instagram's like, you know, out of the control. My downloads are out of control. But like, why am I not making any money? Like, like, why am I broke? Like, why am I standing out here representing a message 
right? And I can't even be able to feed myself or my family or care about, you know, to take care of the people I care around. And, and I know that for me, that's what I felt, you know? Um, and it's, it sucks being in that place. Cause you know, you're, you're, you seem like you're doing a lot of things. Like I, I, I feel like I did like uh, 30 things every day and nonetheless, like my bank account. So in your, in your case, the front end stuff that you're talking about was working. So when you're sitting there and you're like, you're getting your message out to the world. You're getting a lot of likes. You're getting a lot of podcast download. A lot of people are like, that's what I think I have to do. So their, their front end isn't even necessarily working, but they're right. like, my front end's not working and they're putting all their energy and focus into that. And that's where I, that's where I love having this conversation with you. Cause I want to like pull them away from just thinking about that. Right. So yeah. So the front end guys, anything that, you know, the way I define it is anything that people see. Right. So yeah. this is your, the visuals, the likes, the followers, all the vanity stuff, which I love that the way that you put that the stuff that the ego stuff, the stuff that matters, but not necessarily what's going to, well, not necessarily, not what's going to actually build the back end of your business, which yeah. is the, the, the stuff that I love to geek out on and the sales funnels and the lead, gener lead generation and the conversions and the stuff that actually drives sales in your business. So yeah. And, you know, like, like I was saying, like even, so my front end crushing it. Right. And, you know, I had the speaking engagement and I was like, Steph, I don't even know how long, like, I remember one of the biggest takeaways for me was that, Hey, it's great that your front end is crushing it and that you're out there creating content. You're in like your zone. You're like, you're feeling yourself. You're feeling your guests. Like ev everybody's like sending you all this love. But if you don't, I remember one of the take, this was one of the biggest takeaways from our conversation was if I didn't spend the time to learn the business side of things and like learn the systems of how to do it, then my, my message, my passion will stay limited in my little, you know, hundred, 200, 500 people on my, I didn't even think I had 500 people on my email list, you know? Yes. And, and so that was one, one of the moments where I was like, okay, I got it. Like, I don't care what story I tell myself that I'm not a systems person or I'm not a numbers person. I'm like, I need to be a numbers person. You know what I mean? I need to be uh, like, I need to be the business person. I can't just go, Oh, I'm going to be out here. I'm going to interview these millionaires. And that's, that's the last of that we're going to connect. I'm like, no, I want to do a business. Like I want to do a joint venture with them. I want to take it to the next level. I want to be able to impact even more people. Right. So that was like huge mindset shift, even sitting down If anybody who, hangs over stuff for like, you know, half an hour. There's a notepad or a napkin where she's breaking down the numbers for you, right? We totally, I'll never forget. I remember exactly where we were and, and I had to explain this all to you and then we had to get a napkin out. And I remember that, <laughs> I'll never forget that conversation. And, yeah. and so, I think that this is something that so many people need to, need to really, really understand, right? We all have ambition of, doing our own thing of getting our message out of you know building our own business of being entrepreneurs like these are all concepts and all ideas that while sound really good while feel really good we have to look at it and and if it is a business we have to look at well what makes sense right so if you're if you're putting all this content out there and you're worried about all your followers and you're worried about all those things is that worry and that energy and that focus going to translate into a real business? And so many times I talk to people and I'm trying to dig, I'm trying to dig for where is the sales system? Like, where is yeah. the process? Like, yeah, yeah. and there isn't one. And then it's like, well, have you thought about one? And it's like, well, no, it's like, okay, well, what have you thought of? Like, what's the game plan then? And it's like, well, I don't really know. I don't really have one. So the game plan is just more content, more energy, yeah. more time, more give, more value. And there's no, there's no strategy. And believe like, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Well, I think that's, it's, it's most people, right? Like if you're yeah. struggling, like, and, and this is probably a huge blanket statement, but I don't know. I don't know how, and obviously we did not rehearse any of this, but like, I think if anybody is struggling right now, I think it matters. Like you should ask yourself, how many offers are you putting out there right now? Like how, how many, how many opt-ins do you have running right now? Yeah. Like how much money are you spending on ads right now? Yeah. Right. Like, like th th those answers will tell you everything that you want to know about a business. So what yeah. are you selling right now? 
So we have an online accelerator program that uh, teaches everyone how to be able, if they want to be able to create their own top 100 podcasts. So we have an accelerator program, depending on the promotional period, we sell it anywhere from 997 to 1997. Okay. Throughout the years. So that, that was the first product, by the way, I went to the speaking engagement and I don't know if I told you this, but we, like, we, we're we, yep, we pre, we had you pre-sell, remember? Like I pretty much pre, like that was like, the, I never did like the whole online. Cause I didn't even, I can't even compute that at that time. I was like, I don't even know why I need an opt-in page. Right. So she's like, okay, you're going to the, do the talk. Like, just do it there. Like do it in person, like manually do it. And like, I stayed awake, I think for three days, came back with, you know, four people that bought my beta program at like, I don't even know what the, like $600. And I was like, that was like, that was go so crazy, you know? And um, over the years, people have always asked me, hey, like, it'd be great. Like, I love that you taught us in these courses, but is there a way that, you know, you, you can help us implement this, you know? And so I did consulting for, you know, small, medium businesses. And eventually we decided to launch a boutique agency this year, where now we're working with thought leaders and seven, eight figure, you know, Mark, where we literally have a team where they so just literally create content That's like so on their good. phone and they drop, they put it into a Dropbox folder oh, or a yeah, Google drive and it's bye-bye. Like that's it, right? Like the whole podcast so is done. And, and that became the super high end, you know, offer that it was able to help the positioning of everything. Right. Yeah. And so I was mentioning what that was Jay, that was you listening to what the market is looking for and what the market like needs. Right. And, and that's what right. a lot of people also fail to do is, you know, we, we, we lead and naturally we want to follow our passion and we want to find something that we're so jacked up and excited about. And then we go and we put ourselves under a rock and we create the course and create the videos and create the content. <laughs> and then we put it out to the world and it's like the world tells us, well, yeah. I don't really want to watch a million videos. And I don't really want to create all these worksheets and do worksheets and do all these things. Worksheets make sense. <laughs> yeah, that, that counts. Worksheets. You get worksheets. the PDFs and the worksheets. <laughs> right. So then it's like, right, listen to like listen to what the market wants and needs and how they want to consume it. So creating a complete done for you service at, at an agency level, like yes. And and see, like I would have never thought of those things. You know what I mean? And that was, that was the biggest thing, which is like, I think one of my biggest, like intern, like as I'm thinking back, like, I'm like, what, what was one of like my biggest internal things, which yeah. was Steph, I'm trying to blow up. Like, you don't understand. Like I'm Asian Tony Robbins. Like I'm trying to yes. go to that next level. I'm trying yes. to impact billions of people. Like I'm painting you the vision. Yes. Right. And I remember you're like, that's great, Jay. But once again, if you can't figure out the business, how, like it takes money to, to be able to fund, you know, to, to build the, the team, the foundation that you want, the, to be able to get it out there. So, and one of the things was like, why don't you ask your current audience yeah. what they're struggling with? Yeah. You know what I mean? And start from there, right? It might not be the, cause I never got into the game of thinking, oh, I'm going to be the best podcast trainer yeah. in the world. Right. But over but time listen, after, I, that, yeah. that's, this is a great point. So this is where you had the audience, right? And then you went right. to your audience and you listened to what they were asking you and what they were asking you wasn't life coaching, wasn't, they wanted to know how the heck you did right? what you did, which is, you know, get a top rated podcast. And then through that, you're like, well, I have an audience and I have people that are telling me what they need. It only makes sense to start making some money here. I love well, it. And, and, and I think like, and that, that's, that people have it twisted, which is like, they go, oh, well, I'm not that passionate. And I struggle with this so much, like internally, like, oh, it was like, I'm not that passionate. But guess what? W are, are you passionate about growing your business? Are you passionate about growing your movement and getting more people in, enrolled into your values? And to, because there's tons of people, and you know this too, and I'm pretty sure you talk about this, where there's so many people that just love listening to your content. They'll consume your content, but they'll never buy from you. That's but, fine. Like that, that's okay. But your job is to build that community, your movement, right? Like, but like, why are, why are you doing this? Like your, your whole thing as like a thought leader, as a business owner is to be able to inspire and to be able to instruct. And if people are asking you to instruct them, then give them that opportunity to go to that next level with you. Right. Wow. And it wasn't, it wasn't easy to learn you know, like all of this that I'm sharing at one time, 
I remember I had so many little doubts and little, you know what I mean? Like, just like mindset, like things of like, well, Let's you know, just frame if- this. Let's just, I just want everyone to get an idea of what's going on. So three years ago, back up to 2016, how much were you making in your business? Like we're, we're like, lo- like zero money, like we're okay. losing money. So today, like November, 2018, how much are you making in your business? So I, I was just telling Steph last month that we cleared over $30,000. Over $30,000. Yeah. Right? And that was, that was last only last 30 days. In 30 right? days. Yeah. So this is where I want everyone to listen up to, you know, what Jay has to say, because I can come in here and I can say all the things over and over again, but people stop, like start to, you know, it, it's hard sure. when it's not, when it's a little while ago or when it's not relatable. So you are someone who just went through it. Like those big months, like our comp, like they've just started coming now. So for someone who is at where you were maybe three years ago, where you're like, all right, I have to start doing things the right way. And I have to start paying attention and making this business a real business. And to where you are now, where you just had a $30,000 a month, like what, like what were the needle movers? Like, what is it that you would say to someone who wants to go through that process and maybe do it in less than three years? Yeah. Um, well, well, here, here's the thing I think is really important. Um, it's not like I made no money, like yeah. between, right? Like, so, you know, I remember the day we passed $5,000 a month yeah. and I was like, that was a big deal. Yeah. I remember $10,000. I remember you texting me that. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I was oh, like, like, I was like 10 grand. Oh my God. Right now. Like a client, like, I'm not saying we don't celebrate each client. Right. But, you know, we blew right by 15, right. We we're at the 20 for a little while. And, you know, it's, it's like, I, I think the biggest things like looking back is like one getting really serious that this is what you're going to like, this is like, it's, it's like, it requires a bit of an identity shift. Yeah. Right. And like, and, and like, I know there's all these stories that we tell ourselves, like, I'm not good with numbers. Um, I'm not good with systems. I'm like very passionate. Like, I don't know. There's all these things that I hear all the time. And I'm like, look, like no one asked you if you like email sequences, okay? We're saying it's effective. And if you wanna get your message out I there- I love that. Do you know what I mean? Like I no one that. asked you if I webinars was your passion or not. Yeah, We're I not asking it. a passion question. We're asking, are you able to Amen. go execute on that? You know what I mean? So I, I think that was that was one of the biggest things for me. Like, oh, I'm not like an online marketer. I'm not good with data. I'm not good with ads. I'm not good with, I don't even know what, I, like, I, 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 this is too geeky. You know what I mean? I can't figure, I'm like, well, first of all, Steph, it's also, it's, it's going to be 2019 soon. And the tech, it's like, it's even easier now. Right? And I've only been doing it for the last few years, right? Like, we're, we, we're not even talking about, like, coding anything. You know, can you imagine like starting like five, 10 years ago or whatever, like needing to know that. So I just think the tech is so much easier. I I just think that was the biggest mindset of like, Hey, I'm going to go do this now. And it might take me however many hours, like whatever the price is, I'm willing to pay it because I want, I know where I'm going. Yeah. I think I love this so much because this is so important. And I might like, we, we start this business and it's, our own and it's our own idea and we're the practitioner and somehow we think and i'm guilty of it that this process is going to be awesome like it's going to be fun the whole way through like we're going to be creating content and giving and talking about what we like all the time and being in our communities and doing all these things like the business is built behind all of that the business is built in the stuff that you don't even know how to do that you don't know you don't know how to do that you don't even (laughs) like it's it's all of that kind of stuff that you seriously have to commit to and not only running into all the things that you don't know you don't know but it's running into all the things that you really do not want to do and the Mm -hmm. things that you're like i'm not good at this this is not my jam I, I have no idea. Like how many times have I looked at my computer screen and been like, I have no idea what the heck this is or what the heck, like where to start. Like, I have no idea what this is saying to me. All I know is that I don't want to do this and I have to mm. because it's my business. So 
having that mindset shift where it's just, even though it's your passion project and this is what you want to do, like half of this whole thing is, is you showing up to that job and having to get it done, whether you want to feel like it or not. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's just so many times, like, just because like, I, I love, first of all, I love that you say when people are working with you, I, I, I don't, that like, or at least I, I remember when we were working together, it's like, Hey, while we're working together, connect it all, just, just connect it all. Like yeah. have it look terrible, have it go, you know, have the checkout form, go to like a PayPal link or have it like, yeah, do you want to e email transfer me? <laughs> like, yeah. like have it be as like ghetto. As ghetto as be. Yes. But, but here's the thing. Okay. Building an opt-in page is simple and like, it's awesome. But I remember so many times where I'm like, like literally click funnels, like Google, like the, the support, like help page and like yeah. line by line, I'm like reading the thing. Okay. Doing it like highlighting the thing. Okay. Read what's number two. Okay. I got to do number two, like just, just on my screen until it was done. Right. And then yeah. it got a little better. And then the same thing with like email autoresponder, right? It doesn't matter what you use. Like every software has like a little, you know, support thing. So just open it up and then just keep going. And then, and then a year later, you're laughing at the stuff that you were talking to support about a year ago. And that's <laughs> yeah. often to it. Like we all have to go through that. And it's, it's one of these things that we just got to take it on. And so many people are, they get stumped. I find it exciting. I think because I've just had to learn how to overcome so many things. I find that challenge of having to figure something out exciting because I have to do it so much. Um, but that mindset piece is a hard piece. And I'm hoping when it comes to what you've done in the last three years to, you know, to grow, obviously now to be in this position where I say you're out of the gates, where you now have a whole new set of problems that you've graduated yourself into. <laughs> But what would you say is another big, I know, right? Welcome yeah. to the club, buddy. Yeah, welcome, welcome. What would you say is another big, um, a big needle mover for you? Um, okay, so getting really serious about driving people to your opt-ins and, and making an offer. And I, I, I find, and this, without getting like hyper geeky, that's like, good. I think that's hyper geeky. What's your strategy, buddy? No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying like, we, you drive people to an opt-in page and you put a val like you teach them, give them some value right there, but be able to go into the offer, uh, like there as well. And I'm not saying like a tripwire, like, like your strategy at this point in time, Jay Wong. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying like, I just think like the market now is so much more mature. Like people are expecting to see offers they're expecting to see emails. So I think like people, like, I, I think like, yes, you, if they're opting in, they're already warm to, they're already warm to you. They're already warm to whatever your opt-in was. So like to, to offer them that opportunity, whether it's an auto webinar, right. Whether it's like you offer them something that goes into, Hey, I'm a business. Yeah. Right. Which is, that's the frame of mind. Cause I think a lot of times like people wait too long and then what you've essentially, what, and I see podcast, like I don't have a massive show on my podcast. I don't have massive like YouTube show. I don't have like massive numbers, but I meet people at all the same conferences that we speak at and they have like, like, you know, millions, right? They're like, Oh, I got millions. I've been doing this for years. Right. And what they've done successfully is they've trained their audience to get really great content and value from them and not make an offer. So then they feel weird if they go make an offer. Right. right? But what, what I think happened is that they didn't properly communicate to their audience that they are a business, right? Like they didn't say, Hey, this is how we can work together when right. you're ready, when you're ready, like in a non, you know, salesy yeah. type of way. Right. And I do this every email, every single, like, like once you're in my world, like you're going to see it, you know, and that's I what we're, so we're, we're, yeah. And, and this is why I was like, Oh, you guys are smart. Cause you guys are cycling them through all the different things and doesn't matter where it comes from. It matters that they're in your world, whether it's your email list, your Facebook group, like even consuming your free content. Yeah. You know what I mean? Something else, like I think people get so hung up and I get these questions all the time, like in the the, the exact, tell me the num the strategy, how many emails do you send? How many email sequences? Um, you know, how many <laughs> webinars or how many times do you post on Facebook or what do you send in this broadcast? Like really all it's about is content all the time directing them towards a call to action 
whether, you know, whether it's once a day, twice a day, every day, like whatever your method is, but it's just constantly putting your stuff out there, knowing that 95% of people are going to be completely uninterested in what it is you're saying. And then you're going to get that 5% that's interested. And out of that five, I mean, maybe not 95%, but like it's high, then you're going to get that 5% that's interested. And then two, 3% are going to buy, right? So out of everyone that's watching, consuming anything we do, it's a tiny, tiny percentage that will actually pull up the credit card, log into the PayPal to take you up on it. So it's just a matter of continuously casting that net with the same messaging over and over again, emails, podcasts, YouTube, Instagram, whatever your, whatever your platform is. I want to know from you, because you're the podcast guy, how do you feel podcasting plays into this role of online marketing? So, um, I love that question. And I think, um, the, you have to remember whatever you're creating, doesn't matter if it's a podcast, a YouTube channel, a blog, a newsletter, like whatever, there needs to be an ongoing conversation at all times. Right. And that ongoing conversation, I think for me, that was the, that was one of the big moments for my own podcast, which is like, why are people listening to this? Like, why are they, they keep coming back. Right. And, you know, I I think for everybody that's watching this and listening to this, like, that's what you have to think about too. Like for your brand, what's the ongoing conversation of your brand, right? Like I, I, with, you know, like even without hanging out with SJ all the time, like what's her ongoing conversation, right? GSD, are you blowing up your business yet? Are you blowing up your brand yet? Are you taking things to the next level, right? Like look at her Instagram, like every post, it's not like a direct to sales post, right? But like, Every post is reminding you. It's a little, little quote here. It's a little reminder. It's a little thing here that it's the ongoing conversation of like, oh yeah, I got to live. It's a little bit of you, right? Like the content we all create, whether it's a podcast or a video, it's an extension of your brand. It's an extension of who you are, right? And so that's how we, like all our students were like, hey, look, I'm going to teach you how to launch a top 100 podcast, but don't just launch one and get into this like I call it like the hamster wheel of like content, content creation, content, 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 content right? Content. Yeah. And, and cause that's all you know how to do. And that becomes your new safe, like yeah, your, your yeah, new yeah. safe haven. Right. Yeah. And like we, if you better figure out what your ongoing conversation is so that you can create a podcast once a month and it doesn't matter because the hundred people, you know, that, that are listening, those people know what the ongoing conversation is and that it matters so much more you know what I mean? To those hundred people than trying to get like the millions of downloads. What would you say to someone who's not clear on what their ongoing conversation is? Um, so you figure out who you want to make a difference for and then figure out like, can, how you can be able to, to serve those individuals. Like for, for me, like that was the biggest thing, like our podcast, the theme of our show was choosing legacy over currency. Yeah. And I was like, like, I, like, even back then I was like, I don't like, how do I create a product? For like, how do I answer that? Like, how do I help someone with that? Right. And then the more I got to know my audience, the more I'm like, oh, they're individuals like myself. They feel like they have a voice. They feel like they have a message that they want to be able to share out there. They want to build a a thought leadership platform. They want to be able to kind of take things to the next level. Right. So then it's like, okay, how can I serve them? So it's asking those avatar questions like module one throwback, right? Right. Going and doing those over and over and over again, getting to know your audience with that feedback, yeah. you know, yeah. and then saying, okay, how can I start? Because like, you know, at, at, at the, your ongoing conversation needs to connect. Like it will be strongest if it emotionally connects to yeah. your products so, and services. Yeah. And to the, right? to the content. And to the content. So like we have tons of our, um, I'll give you a couple examples. Like yeah. we have uh, people we work with, uh, people that do commercial real estate, but they want to build a platform where they share with other people how to be able to do that. So I'm like, great. What are the questions you're getting? Like, what are, what are people asking you? Right? Like what, what are the common questions and like build content answering those things. And so like, and then have a call to action during the content that drives them back into your products and services, your emails, right? Where you can just remind them very lightly say, Hey, when you're ready, here are the, you know, two ways, three ways of working with me, by the way, we have an online course. You can teach it yourself, right? You can do it yourself. You can do it with me, maybe hire me as a coach. Right. Or maybe, you know, we'll do it for you. I don't know. We, we have a two day intensive or something. Right. So right. like, I, I think it's just about understanding who you're looking to make a difference for, who you're looking to serve 
and then saying, okay, what can that ongoing conversation be so that it ties in with my products and services? Does it make sense? It totally makes sense. And as, and it's so good because this is like, this is the sweet spot, right? It's marrying content, you know, truly, truly putting stuff out there that's going to make a difference and knowing that most people are not going to take you up on that call to action and being really being okay with it and really yeah. knowing that you, you have a message and, you know, those people, whether they find inspiration, whether they, you know, experience a transformation, they don't invest with you ever that that is truly okay. And that's a part of your mission. But when your content is good and when you're intentional with your message and when, when there's clarity and when you give yourself permission to have that emotional conversation, because people are only tuned in when there is some, when they're feeling something, that's the truth. It's not, people don't just listen to something or read something if they're not, if they're not making it about themselves and if they're making it about themselves, there's some kind of emotional, like attention to this. Either they want to, you know, they want to, they want to share their message with the podcast. They want to build their business. They want to start making some money. They want to lose weight. They want to feel better. They want to sell commercial real estate and they want to build their portfolio, whatever it is, people are emotionally connected. So if you're the person on the other side of that information, you got to go there. You got to have that conversation. You got to dig deep, right? And, and bring those emotions up because that's what will encourage the right people at the right time to take action. And it's those people that will be your, you know, one to 5% that will build you your significant business. But when you don't ask for the call to action, when you don't say, Hey, here's how you can work with me. If this resonated with you, you're, it's never going to happen. And then if you don't create the content and the value add in the first place, it's never going to happen. So I feel like it's, you know, what you're, what you've done now in the business that you've created, you had this like wicked content machine, right? Where you're engaging with people. And that's what people have such a hard time, including myself building. And then when you marry that with a backend, that's actually lead generating and converting, like that's the sweet spot. And you yeah. let with the content, which is, which is, which is the awesome thing. A lot of people lead with like, I want to make money. What's my content? Right, right, right. Well, and, and, and one, and one more thing, cause I, I know we'll probably, you know, be a little longer, but um, you know, the podcasting just happens to be the medium that's not only hot right now, but it's the one medium that people can take with you on the go and they can just listen to you in like the, the deadest of times right? Like you have no idea how many emails I've gotten where people are like, Hey dude, you've been to the gym with me. You've been in the car with me. You've been, you know, you've done gardening with me. And I'm like, I think you got the wrong guy personally, yeah. <laughs> but then I'm like, Oh, I understand what they mean because like, I'm like in their minds, like I become the voice for building a legacy. Do you know Love what I mean? It. And for everybody that's here, like you need to become the voice for nutrition and health. Yeah. You need to become the voice of business brand. Like you need to become the voice of MLM. You got to become the voice of whatever the thing it is. And so then you have like, cause then it kind of, you, you kind of have like superpowers in some ways, right? Because like they yeah. don't even have to listen to you on every episode. Like yeah. I don't, none of my students listen to every, are you crazy? Yeah. Right. Everyone's like busy, but it's about those, like those ones that they check in and they go, oh yeah, that's right. You're Jay's, Jay, yeah. Jay's got you're me locked the, back in. Movie. Right. Yeah. And, like, that's what like, I don't engage with all your content all the time, but like when I do, I go, yeah, Steph's like, I got to work a little harder because I know Steph's going to outwork me a little bit. Right. She's like GST. So I'm like, oh, I got to get, I got to get in the extra hour or whatever. Right. But it's that, it's that reminder. Right. It's that ongoing yeah. conversation. And then you start dominating that in their sphere. You add that with ads, opt-ins, call to actions. It makes like, it, it makes sense to sell something more high end because you're challenging their your audience's identity. I love it. I love it. On that note, if someone's jacked up and wants to be the voice <laughs> of whatever it is they're doing, and guys, I don't know if you caught at the beginning of this. I know people come in and out. Um, Jay's the guy that helps you launch your podcast. If you want to get your message out and you want to do it via podcasting, there is nobody else I would send you to other than my boy Jay Wong. How can they find you? Um, so best way is, uh, listening to the podcast, the inner change maker, um, or going to the website, the inner change maker.com. 
I'm going to put links to everything in the description um, so that everyone can find you if they want to launch their podcast or they want to inquire about what that looks like um, and some of the services and products and offers you have as it relates to that. How can they get a hold of you? Yeah. Um, so everybody here can just download my podcast creation roadmap. Wink, wink. Yes. It's an opt-in. However, you'll see what a 65% opt-in page looks like. So, hell, that's a good win. <laughs> There you go. And so, then you get, you know, the eight phases of launching a podcast and all as that a kind bonus. Of stuff and a bonus. <laughs> you're the bomb. And Jay, you've been like, you're so awesome inside the group and, and just with everyone in general. And you've been so incredible. You know, it, it's so important for people to see in real time people's growth in business. Because once people get out of the gates and they start doing well, they're just kind of in their own world. I mean, you've, you're just consistently there and you're willing to share and you're always sharing your wins with me. I remember when your business one was non-existent, when you had your first sale, like I've seen you grow up, man. I've seen you grow up. I got the text at the 5k at the 10k and now I'm getting those texts up to 30k. And it's just been so awesome to see this thing grow. Cause for me, I can see it and I'll be like, I can see what's going to happen here. But when you're in it guys, and if you're in it and it's not there, you're not at the 5k, you're nowhere near the 30k. You're just like, what is happening right now? I can see it. Jay can see it. He's just been through it. But when you're not, when you're not seeing it yet, Jay, what would you tell someone who's not seeing it yet? You know, there's a great quote that I used to write because I don't know. I don't even know if you know this, but like when that whole first year and a half, like I was like, I like moved back in with my parents and was like living in their living room and like trying to learn how to blog and how to podcast. And that's where I launched my podcast. Like it was, it was fun, right? <laughs> like, like, that's one way of looking at it. But there was this one quote I always would put on like the wall and it, it, it was a Brendan Burchard quote. And it said, don't let your small business keep you small minded. Mm. Right. And I always think back to that. And I goes, you know, like, no matter where you're at, 1000, 5000, 10,000, 20,000, or beyond a month, like, ensure that you have a very, like, large vision, like, don't be scared of those things. Right. But then also don't forget to reverse engineer that you know, and saying, Hey, look, I want to be there. I, I'm going to be there one day. And uh, like, I'm going there. I know where I'm going. I know that next year is going to be even greater. We, we have some of the things lined up. If I shared with you some of the things lined up, you'd be like, holy crap, like this is really like, this is barely starting. Right. But it's, it's just having that mindset of like, you know what, like I'm, I, I'm going to learn this and I'm going to get yeah. better. And I'm, I'm going to be able to still think big, even if I, I've, I'm coming from humble beginnings. I love it. It's non-negotiable. I'm going one way. Yeah, it's. I love it's it. One way, and, and and by the way, I so appreciate. There's like not a lot of people that I, I like that that helped me so much back when I started. Um, and it wasn't even like I know it was like two, like it's like ninety minutes or two hours, like whatever the conversation was, but like changed my life. You know, just having those mindset shifts. So I hope that by doing this and sharing with the group, like I could care less about, you know what I mean? Like, like it's not an ego thing. Like I could care less if you think like 30 is cool or not cool. Like it has nothing, if you don't listen to my podcast, like that's cool. That's fine. It's not, it has nothing to do with me, right? Like this, like you being in this group has everything to do with you, yes. you know? And, yeah. and I don't know, Steph, I just, I appreciate you so much and I just, any chance I get to like shine a light on you and, you know, share some gratitude with you. I, I do, I take it up on it because it, it mattered so much to me back then. It matters to me now. Um, and I think you're doing some amazing things with your group and I've seen it grown. Like I remember when the group was like a hundred ish people. Yeah. You're talking about the Build Your Empire group. Yeah. yeah. Like I remember yeah. that group when it was yeah. like a hundred people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And I appreciate that. Thank you so much for your words. It's so awesome to, to, to see people popping off and you see them right before they pop, you see them like about to, and it's just, it's just so amazing to, to be a part of it and to see it and to grow together. We're all human, right? We all have those fears and those things. And so to, to 
see people transform and just continue to grow and evolve and to be a part of the process, it's incredible. So thank you so much for for, for doing this. Thank you so much for always being open and willing to share. Guys, if you, um, we're gonna leave all the information for Jay in the description. Jay, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your friendship. Thank you for everything that you do. Um, I'm gonna chat with you a minute offline, but we're gonna, we're gonna jump, <laughs> we're gonna jump offline. Everyone, <laughs> this is our, this is our exit. Yeah, this is the, goodbye, goodbye, go, goodbye. get to work. Okay, get to work. Thank you, guys. <laughs>